welcome everyone. It is such a pleasure and honor for me to be with you this evening. I'd like to welcome you to the psychology of coaching. This is part of our monthly meta coaching series. And what Father James was asking, uh, Mazuki, do you have this every um, uh, what do you call? Ooh, yeah, uh, I somehow clicked on the whiteboard now. How do I how do I close that? <laughs> uh, let me see. I accidentally uh, switched on the whiteboard and I need to navigate to close it. Let me just. Uh, Mm. Ah, right. So, have I got the whiteboard closed? Uh, just now, accidentally, you went on. Thank you very much uh, for uh, your feedback there. And uh, yes, as I was saying, it's such a pleasure for me to be meeting uh, all of you. And I was just having the chat. Uh, with uh, Father James just now that we have these uh, sessions, these meetings every uh, Thursday. This is the uh, third Thursday of the month. So that's why we are, talk we are meeting on the Meta Coaching System. On the fourth Thursday of the month, we, we talk on parenting. On the first Thursday of the month, uh, the, the topic is on neurosemantics and the second Thursday of the month, the topic is on self-leadership. So whichever topic that appeals to you, you are most welcome to uh, join us. Uh, and I, and I um, am very uh, grateful that uh, some of you are joining in every week uh, and keeping me company over here. And that is most uh, uh, appreciated. Now, some of you are here for the first time, and I would like to welcome you uh, as a first timer. And there are those who are here who joined these sessions before. So regardless whether you are first timer or a regular, uh, welcome to you. And I encourage you to interact in the discussions later. And for those of you who are meeting me for the first time, I'm Mazuki. I'm a neurosemantics trainer and meta coach. I also represent Malaysia in the international leadership team of the International Society of Neurosemantics. I help people like you to systematically develop skills in leading, communicating, and coaching to bring out the best in yourself and in others around you. By actualizing that, you can experience an exceptional quality of life filled with happiness creativity, and fulfillment. For this evening, we'll be... <clears throat> I'm just sharing a screen, giving it time. Yes, it does. Uh, there is a little lag. Uh, so I'm glad that the screen is on now. Uh, in the 60 to 90 minutes together, we'll be discussing on the mix of coaching psychologists, because as we are coaching, we want to know where does that psychology come from? So the second topic we'll be discuss, uh, discussing is coaching as an interdisciplinary field, uh, a psychological uh, psychology for coaching, not therapy. And the fourth topic will be the three domains of coaching. As usual, I will pause for discussion after each main point. The reason for that is that I like to invite questions or comments and any contributions that you may have, uh, I really value them because I do not want to be talking nonstop. Uh, I value hearing your opinion, your questions, and I welcome those. My style is to be light and humorous. So if I laugh or smile, I'm never laughing at you but at our silly human qualities. My purpose is to lighten things up, reduce being serious, and be more real in that uh, particular way. Now, what we are here for this evening is 
on the meta coaching system. We will be discussing on the meta coaching system. So as an overview, what the meta coaching system is, it is the system, a, a, a systematic system that was founded uh, and developed by Dr. Michael Hall and Michelle Duval. Uh, meta coaching, as I mentioned to you just now, is a system. It is a systematic system which presents coaching in a structured way. And when I say in a structured way, when you learn it using the meta coaching system, will bring you from A to Z. Uh, at the outcome is that you'll be able, you'll have that confidence because the skills and competencies of coaching will be there with you uh, to get uh, to 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 allow you to coach at the higher level. Now the series that we have for this evening is written. Uh, it's based on the book that was written by Dr. Michael Hall, uh, the director and co-founder of Neurosemantics. So let's get uh, started uh, with the introduction uh, session for this evening. That uh, as an introduction, I'd like to bring to you a quotation from Abraham Maslow uh, that says, healthy people are more integrated in another way, in them, the cognitive, which is choosing, the cognitive, which is the understanding, the affective and motto are less separated from each other. Less separated means that they are more joined. Uh, so it means to say they are more synergic. That is, they are working collaboratively without conflict uh, to the same ends. So that is what we are looking into when we are coaching people to bring people to the space whereby they are uh, in full collaboration with themselves rather than having different parts that are putting them uh, away from their goal. So the question, is there a psychology that uniquely informs and governs coaching? Is there a unique psychology that we can claim as the source of coaching as a profession? If there is, what kind of psychology is it? How does it relate to the older psychologies? Is it completely different from the early psychological models? Or is it a special facet of them? All of these questions set in motion a search a search for the psychology uniquely fit for what we seek to do in coaching. So what I will be bringing to you this uh, evening is the psychology behind coaching. And uh, when Michael mentioned about that search, uh, it, uh, that's why he calls himself as a researcher and modeler. He did the research and model highly successful people uh, uh, coaches and uh, with Michel Duval, uh, he was able to bring in this meta coaching system. And in doing so, he identified the psychology behind the coaching that we bring through the meta coaching system. Now, uh, coaching involves psychology. So that is not uh, any news. Of course, uh, it does involve psychology. In coaching, we deal with human nature and human functioning. So we are using psychology and we are assuming numerous premises about human nature. But what kind of psychology is, it, is this? What kind of psychology do we need? We have to ask this question because there are many different kinds of psychology. So all of these psychologies are not the same. Freudian psychology significantly differs from behaviorism, from cognitive psychology, from developmental psychology, from gestalt, Alderian psychology. There are many schools of psychology, kinds of psychology, and areas of psychology, such as child, adult, abnormal, industrial, group, social, leadership, so many different kinds of psychology. Each of these different psychologies operate from its own set of assumptions. 
and beliefs about people. And that's why we have to be very careful about the psychology that we are using in our coaching. Uh, there, there are different ways of looking at human nature, change, growth, learning, and a dozen other key areas that affect how a change agent works. Some psychologists are highly deterministic in nature, such as psychoanalysis or behaviorism, while others present human nature as highly fluid and changeable like cognitive psychology, logotherapy, uh, reality, brief psychology. So when we talk about the psychology that we are using, are, is the psychology we are using really fit with the people that we are coaching? In coaching psychology, first thing is that we assume that people are both sane and well. We assume that our clients are not broken, wounded, sick, pathological, defensive, or stuck at a historical stage of development. So one thing we definitely know is this. Coaching psychology is not about abnormal psychology. Coaching psychology is about normal psychology, normal behavior. So coaching psychology is not about pathology or about human brokenness, not at all, okay? So coaching psychology is the psychology of human health and high level functioning. It is about people who are in the growth needs and growth motivation, who are self-actualizing, seeking ever new peak performances, who are change embraces and who are fascinated and excited about all of the new possibilities yet to emerge in their personalities and experiences. For the most part, these are the people who are already great learners, who are already successful in various ways and who simply want more. That's basic human nature. They want more successful and they want more. So that is also part of what's in the psychology of coaching. They want to think more, know more, understand more, believe more, feel more, speak more, do more, experience more, have more and give more. Now, do these people have problems? These highly successful and actualizing people do these people have problems or do these people have no problems? Of course they do have problems. Because to be human is to have problems. The only time that you don't have any problem is when you die. <laughs> you are gone from this earth. So you don't have any more worldly problem. So as long as we are in this world, we have problems. To be alive is to have problems. The distinction is the kind and quality of problems which they experience. The problems that they do not have are those that call for the intervention of psychotherapy in the first place, like psychological dysfunction, trauma, or pathology. The problems which they do have are those which are blocking and interfering them from reaching one of their visionary goals. So instead of dealing with the serious problems of self, the problems are either those about growing and self-actualization or those of solving an external problem in this world. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause there to allow uh, anyone to uh, come in, give your opinion or ask any question. Because uh, when we look at the psychology uh, of coaching, we are talking about the psychology of people who are well, who are healthy. And uh, I want to emphasize that because sometimes uh, people uh, misuse the word coaching with therapy or 
with counseling later we'll go we'll, we'll touch a little bit uh, about that but coaching uh, coaching is about bringing people who are healthy who are vibrant bringing them to the next level and we are dealing with psychologists that are well and sane the psychology is that people who are well and sane okay so any questions or comments from any one of you so go ahead and uh, just unmute your mic uh, let me hear you so are you good uh, for now right thank you so let's move to the next uh, main point this point the second point is on the mix of coaching psychology so we are going to go into the psychologies that we will find in coaching now what is the answer to the question about the kind of psychology which is at the heart of coaching process. Now, there is no definitive answer yet. As uh, Michael mentioned, there is no definitive answer. However, in the meta coaching system, we are looking at five different, uh, we are bringing together five uh, types of psychology. So let's uh, get into it. The first one is self-actualization psychology. The first and most fundamental psychology is that which created the paradigm shift as it focused on human nature in its full range of possibilities. This, this psychology includes our basic lower needs as well as our higher needs. This was the incredible contribution that Maslow made in his hierarchy of human needs model. We have the physiological need, we have the safety and security need, we have the, uh, uh, the uh, love and belonging need, then the need of esteem, these are the uh, lower basic needs, and then to be able to rise to the self-actualization uh, self need. To rise to one's highest potentials, a person has to learn to cope effectively with the deficiency needs uh, as i mentioned just now the survival needs safety security love and affection and the self-value needs of esteem and recognition now gratifying those needs uh, uh, succinctly or sufficiently enables us to move to the growth needs instead of being stuck in the uh, deficiency need so that's the first uh, psychology in coaching the second psychology is developmental psychology. This is the psychology that focuses on the stages that people go through as they develop mentally, sexually, socially, in self-development, morally, and so on. It describes the process of maturing in all of these facets of ourselves. This psychology focuses on how people develop, how they find and fulfill the talents and passions, how they start with their predispositions and become well adjusted, how they can become fully what they are capable of. So developmental psychology through the stages. So this is the uh, second psychology in coaching. The third psychology is cognitive behavioral psychology. This psychology focuses on the primacy of thinking and behaving in influencing our experiences. It highlights that internal mental maps which we create about things in turn guide our actions and behaviors. For early NLP developers, this gave them a way to begin modeling the structure of subjective experience and provided tools for changing one's mental maps and thereby changing one's responses. Within cognitive psychology, 
is the area of communication psychology. This psychology focuses on information theory, on how we send and receive messages within ourselves. So that's intrapersonal uh, and with others. That's interpersonal, which creates states of understanding and meaning. It describes how communication works, the elements of communication, the nature of language. So that's cognitive behavioral psychology that equally informs the uh, psychology behind meta coaching system. The fourth uh, psychology is social and group psychology systems. Social psychology includes many things, anthropology, sociology, um, interpersonal relations, group dynamics, and so on. All of these disciplines focuses on how we can work best with others as we create win-win agreements, arrangements, uh, effective, loving, and trusting relationships collaborations, and high-performance teams. Our social psychology includes the many human processes whereby we interact with each other to create our group and organizations. It focuses on the group and social dynamics that play a significant role in such social factors as leadership, management, politics, government, in business theory and application, how many of you are familiar with theory X and theory Y about people, about workers? Theory X describes workers who don't want to work, don't want responsibility, uh, challenge, accountability, and who have to be motivated, watched, and controlled. So that's theory X. Then theory Y describes workers who want to work, enjoy work, long to take responsibility, love challenges uh, and feedback, and who only need some general support. So that's social and group psychology. And the fifth psychology that informs uh, the meta coaching system is existential psychology. At the heart of this form of psychology is the emphasis on the philosophical concerns regarding what it means to be fully human. The central concepts include self-awareness, freedom to choose, responsibility, anxiety, ultimate aloneness, authenticity, relationship, and the quest for meaning. Choice lies at the heart of existential humanistic psychology. Viktor Frankl said that the last human freedom is the freedom to choose one's attitude. And that is something that no one can actually take from us. Consciousness of choice uniquely defines the human condition at its best. Yet, what's required to handle that higher level of consciousness is a willingness to embrace uncertainty and ambiguity. Not surprising is that the ability to embrace uncertainty lies at the heart of the creativity process. So these are the five uh, uh, psychology, uh, psychologies that is the mix of coaching psychologies. The first is self-actualization psychology. The second is developmental psychology. The third is cognitive psychology. The fourth um, is uh, social and group psychology, uh, psychology. And the fifth one is existential psychology. So I'd like to open up uh, for questions or comments with respect to the mix of psychologies. I have one question. When we are performing the coaching session, right? 
Does that mean that we need to observe uh, the five of these from the person or does it mean that uh, when we do the coaching, we have all the five in? What, okay, maybe you, uh, can you help to um, me to understand this? Yeah, so basically we bring all of the five uh, psychologists into play because these psychologists will inform us regarding how the client is thinking, feeling, and saying, doing. They're, how are they uh, ex uh, exercising their, uh, their, their powers? So uh, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, psychologists will help us to approach and also to uh, connect uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the clients. Uh, for example, uh, the first thing that I mentioned earlier was uh, the, uh, the psychology that we bring in coaching is that people are sane and well. So when people are sane and well, and we notice that they are behaving in a way that is unsane, so since we know that they are sane, so what's causing the unsaneness? It is in the behavior. So that's why we are looking into the strategies for uh, execution. So they may have that strategy wrong. They may have their uh, frames uh, 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 in the wrong place. It is not because they are insane or unwell, but it is the strategies that are wrong. So when we bring in this, uh, this psychologist in coaching, then it helps us to be able to coach the client to a higher levels instead of throwing them into the therapy room. Oh, something's wrong with you. Therefore, <laughs> you have to be corrected. Yeah. So, so that means that when we have the coaching session, then uh, we will need to observe uh, whether they are under either one of these category. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So all of, all of the psychologists come into play. So to be able to, uh, to be aware from, uh, with that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else has got any questions or comments? Let's move on to the next point. And this is uh, the point on coaching as an interdisciplinary field. Now, the integration of all these psychologies endows coaching with multiple theories and a great many processes and techniques. Because of the interdisciplinary in nature, uh, in the nature of coaching, the danger is it can become uh, a mix of a great many choices and people can, people I'm referring to, uh, uh, we as coaches, can subsequently treat it uh, eclectically, meaning to say we pick and choose. So it is not about that. When this happens, then the coach as the promoter of human growth can be overwhelmed with a range of choices and unable to discern the larger structure for how to navigate a decision about what to do. Now, one thing that we know without question is that coaching involves creating a close and personal relationship with a client, believing in people. Uh, notice all of these come, are driven by all the five psychologists. Yeah? Coaching involves creating a close and personal relationship with a client, believing in people and human nature, and facilitating trust, care, compassion, uh, passion, energy, development, discipline, exploration, challenge, feedback, and so much more. So when we come from all of these five psychologists, then uh, um, the relationship that we create with the client, these, becomes, uh, these become 
as a matter of fact in that way because it is coming from all of these five psychologies. Coaching works with people to move them to greater level of self-management, self-awareness, and effectiveness. In all of this, there is also fierceness, a firmness, and disciplined nature because uh, a highly focused in a pragmatic way on performance and results oriented. Remember, we talk about the psychology of people who are sane and well. People who are sane and well will rise to the challenge. They don't need to be, uh, uh, to be handled uh, uh, cocoon or, or anything. They want to go. So that's why that firmness and uh, challenge uh, comes in in the coaching conversation. Yet, we still need, need a psychological framework uh, for integrating all of this. So that brings us to the next uh, main point, which is a psychology for coaching, not therapy. So that's why we need a different psychology for, um, uh, for coaching, uh, as opposed to the psychology that is used for uh, therapy. Yeah. Now, all of the older psychologies arose to address problems of hurt and dysfunction. So that's the, what drove the psychology behind uh, therapy. They arose at a time when it became obvious that was known in medicine could not help. The older words, neurosis and psychosis, spoke about the confusion at that time about what was going on with a person. The discovery that something was wrong and it was not medical led to understanding that something was wrong mentally and emotionally and something needed to be done about it. But what? So from those early psychologists, then arose various forms of psychotherapy for the purpose of dealing with the hurt and dysfunction. Psychotherapy arose as the practical processes for how to use psychological understandings to remedy that which is postulated as wrong or broken. So I want you to uh, put a mark over here. So this is at the core of therapy that because people are wrong or broken, we need to fix them. As opposed to coaching, we don't have that uh, approach. Yeah? So this explains why therapists focus on problems, hurts, wounds, traumas, and on fixing that which is broken, and on healing the client's minds and emotions. In this, therapy is mostly remedial in nature, fixing what's broken. You want to remedy it. It works to enable a person to become okay. So we need to understand the psychology behind therapy that it is postulated that people are wrong and broken. And that is why when coaches don't understand the psychology of coaching, they approach their coaching client with the viewpoint of wanting to fix something that's broken or hurt. No. So that's not what we are doing in coaching. However, that's what therapists are doing in uh, therapy, yeah? in psychotherapy. So true enough, over the years, a light version of therapy arose, that is counseling. This extended the values of therapy to people who were not damaged by trauma, but who were struggling with life's everyday struggles. They just needed some counsel for nudging their lives in the right direction. So that's the difference uh, when it comes to uh, therapy. So we have people who are broken and hurt. They go through psychotherapy. And there are people who are not so broken and hurt. However, something is quite wrong. So that's when uh, uh, counseling comes in. Now, obviously, 
because coaching, we are talking about people who are functioning well, who are successful. Obviously, coaching needs a different psychology. We cannot use the psychology of people who are hurt or broken because people who are ready for coaching, they are not hurt, neither are they broken. Because coaching primarily focuses on generative development and transformation. This generative orientation focuses on generating and challenging new creative responses. Coaching is for people who have their act together and who want more, more skill, more learning, more self-confidence, more expertise, more joy, more love, more health. I stress on the word more because they are already experiencing skills, learning, confidence, uh, uh, expertise, joy, love, health. They want more. So this is what we are referring to, generating more in life. So coaching does not focus on fixing things as it does on facilitating the next stage in development in a growing person. It is not about becoming just okay. It is about becoming one's best. Everything one can become and able to produce superior performances. So no wonder challenge lies at every center of coaching. And I'll repeat that. So as a coach, at every uh, coaching, that part of challenging the client to go to the next step is at the, at the center of that coaching, right? Coaching focuses the client on how to think better, feel better, attain higher levels of health, well-being, focus, alertness, and relaxation, skill. Rather than solving problems or dealing with difficulties, coaching operates with a very different focus. This is what we call the coaching focus. Yeah. So the uh, coaching focus is about asking the questions, how can I make things even better? What's the best things that things can become? How can I become even more resourceful and effective? What is the next in my ongoing development for greater effectiveness? What can I create and innovate to take things to the next level? What challenge is inviting and calling me to step up to it? What is my highest values and meanings and my best performances? So these are what we call the coaching focus. The generative and self-actualizing focus of coaching inevitably makes its psycho psychology positive and solution-oriented. So that's why the psychology of coaching is positive and solution-oriented. We generate new levels of competence, success, and well-being in coaching rather than the remedial use of psychology that is fixing problems. A well-trained and qualified personal coach will have a good understanding and background in human psychology. And that is why we are talking about the psychology of coaching today. And especially as applied to self-actualizing processes that enable a person to move to peak experiences and performances. Coaching focuses on refining and honing a person's best skill and searching for potentials that the person may not even be aware of. Problems only arise on those things interfering with vision and values. The focus in coaching is not on problems. Coaching works on playing to one's strength and eliminating the things that get in the way or that sabotage excellence. This means that coaching is 
generative and solution focus. It also makes coaching developmental in the best sense of the word. Developmental psychology explores the various stages that we go through over the lifespan in, be in becoming fully human in the most positive and constructive sense. Whether it is the psychosexual stages, the psychosocial stages, the psychomental stages, the stages of faith, spiral dynamics, and so on. These are the life stages that unfold as we move through the life transitions, as our body continues to develop over the years, and as our search for meaning, love, and contribution evolves as we live within our social and cultural environments. So, coaching takes a systemic approach for helping clients get their brains and bodies functioning at the best within all of the contexts, within contexts which we identify as factors in our lives, factors that affect our success. So for this, the personal coach needs a good understanding of systemic thinking, processes, and ways of interacting. So that's why the coaching psychology, being aware of the psychology of coaching uh, at the very core, allows us as coaches to be much more effective for the client. So let me open up for uh, questions or comments from any one of you. Are you good? I, I, I have one. I mean, I, I would like to un understand, like, uh, like what may, uh, you just mentioned, right? If people that are really, I mean, you notice that the person is not well, right? Mm -hmm then they will probably uh, will need to go for psychotherapy, right? But how do we uh, be able to, I mean, uh, what is the approach to the client if we found out or we notice that they actually have this problem? Are we telling them straightly or, you know, because when people heard about psychotherapy, not mm -hmm. favorable or favorite things for them, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we approach if we do find out that? Mm. Uh, how do I do that? Now, um, a lot of um, what we do in coaching is uh, when we talk about people who are sane and well, so these people respond to challenges. These people respond to growth. Now, uh, people who are unsane, so I'm not talking about people who are insane. That's, an, that's another step. Yeah? People who are insane uh, can respond to meta-coaching because through the process of uh, helping them going through uh, overcoming their cognitive distortions, meaning to say they have the wrong maps. And because of that, their behavior turns out to be insane or unwell. So these people can still be helped through, uh, through uh, coaching. Now, the moment they move to the next uh, stage, which is considered to be people who are unwell and insane, we need to use a different kind of psychology. And that psychology, uh, because people who are uh, uh, operating at uh, the level of insane, they need to have a new uh, parent figure to help them. So that's why psychotherapists uh, are trained in, uh, in uh, transference. Yeah? They are trained in transference, meaning to say, bringing in the client who is unwell to get the client to transfer their trust to the psychiatrist 
and only then the psychiatrist can uh, help them. So this requires another set of skills. So that's why as a, uh, as a coach, if I were to detect that, uh, that my client is unwell, uh, then I would recommend them uh, to go and meet uh, uh, a psychiatrist in that sense. So that's why uh, in my case, I, have, uh, I, I keep a, a couple of friends who are psychiatrists uh, close by in case I need to refer cases, uh, cases to them. Because uh, what we, what we uh, I think we discussed it in the last session, uh, Michael mentioned about uh, the different hats that we wear as a coach. Uh, there are times that we wear the hat of a mentor. There are times that we wear the hat of a, uh, of a consultant. Uh, there are times that uh, uh, we wear, uh, uh, so, so those are the different hats that we wear. But the head of the therapist yeah, is uh, uh, what Michael mentioned is that the head is the therapist. When do you wear it? Never. Because it requires a different quality of a relationship. So this is coming from a, a licensed therapist because Michael is a licensed therapist. So the dynamics of the relationship between a coach and therapist are two totally different things. So uh, my approach to it is the moment I, I uh, detect that my client is not uh, operating from the psychologist that we, we, we talk about, then I know that, no, this person needs a, a different uh, professional to help this person. Yeah, does, does that help? Yeah, because, yeah. because now we've come to the limit. I, I think it's like for like what you shared, right? You know, friends that who are psychiatric, but mm. for, at least for me, I don't know who. Uh, so when you want to kind of uh, tell the person, right? So I me mean for, my, for my personal opinion is like, you need to have the skill to tell him so that he can accept to go to the psychiatric. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, I think he will get more even frustrated and angry. Yes. Uh, you see, uh, uh, when our uh, cognition is so distorted, uh, a person who is sane and well through the processes of uh, the, using the, the tools of meta modeling and uh, meta questions uh, will allow a person who is sane and well to be able to notice their, uh, uh, their distortion or their uh, uh, lack of cognition and, they, and they, can, uh, they can change that. However, when that gets distorted too much, that person will not be able to notice it on their own. They need somebody to tell them, but not just anybody. So that's why uh, uh, a psychiatrist is trained in the skill of uh, transferring, meaning to say they, uh, the, the patient transfers their trust to the psychiatrist and the psychiatrist reparents the patient. So there is reparenting involved. Reparenting involves the psychiatrist telling the uh, patient what is right, what is wrong. So, 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 so that requires a totally different dynamic of relationship. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Lily, for asking that question. Anyone else has got any comments or questions? Okay. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Samson, for your uh, comment in the chat. So let's move to the uh, next uh, main topic that is the three domains of coaching. And in meta coaching, all of these three domains uh, are there. Yeah? We, are, we are playing around with these three domains. So the three domains of uh, coaching, and they are, one is performance coaching. Performance coaching is about uh, focusing on the behavioral dimension. So, uh, coaching a person in 
what they say and what they do. So that is in the behavioral dimension. Next is developmental uh, coaching. So now, now the coaching goes into personal, self, identity, meaning. So this is a developmental aspect of coaching. The next one is transformational coaching. So now we are going into the direction, the vision, the values. So those of you who are familiar with uh, meta coaching, you, you realize that uh, these are all of the areas that we go into when we are coaching at the meta level. Because at the meta level, we are going into the direction, vision, and values. Those are transformational coaching. Uh, we are going into personal self-identity, meaning that's developmental coaching. And from there, it translates into their behavior, and that is uh, performance coaching. So let's take a look at uh, these domains one by one. Uh, first is per, uh, performance coaching. Performance coaching relates to the behavioral dimension where we grow and change. It focuses primarily on incremental changes that a person can achieve through modifying and learning new behaviors, skills, and actions in various contexts uh, of life. This coaching most directly seeks to take a person's skill to the next level and next level in terms of quality and quantity of performance. Performance coaching focuses externally, externally on what a client does or needs to be able to. So this is the coaching of the outer game. Now, developmental coaching relates to the personal dimension of one's self, uh, the identity, maturity. Here, the focus is on the changes in, in one's thinking, believing, feeling, identity, values. Here, the person evolves, grows, and develops. Evolutionary changes occur here. Because the change is about a person evolving to become more rather than just doing more. Yeah? They are evolving to become more, not just doing more. However, as they become more, they will do more. It is about human becoming. This shifts the focus from the outside to the inside. The changes now are in the area of representations, beliefs, understandings, uh, decisions, and other mental, emotional phenomena that work as the inner frames of mind that govern a performance. So this is the inner game. The coach explores what a client thinks, feels, and believes about the performance, the context, uh, the others, a person's self-definition and understanding, and dozens of other frames about what a person does uh, or experiences. As a result, the focus is not first and foremost on behaviors, but on developing the person. The person not only changes what he or she does, that's the performance, but who he or she is or is becoming. That's developmental, okay? So that's developmental coaching. And the third one is transformational coaching. Transformational coaching relates beyond mere personal development to a person's larger sense of reality and dimension, direction. Various models about the levels of development map the different ways of thinking about this dimension. This kind of coaching deals with revolutionary changes. The changes of one's uh, highest frames of mind that address a person's purpose, intention, direction, and vision. When a person makes changes here, she often experiences the kind of paradigm shift that transforms everything in life. So this is when people say that was life changing. 
So that's when that happens. Who they are, developmental, and what they do. It just changes uh, that uh, aspect. So these are the three domains uh, of coaching that we uh, encounter in the meta coaching system. The performance coaching, developmental coaching, and transfer transformational coaching all together. Okay. So any questions or comments there? Um, yes, check you. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry that I, I can't hear you well enough. Okay, can you hear me now? That's be much better. Okay, so for this, uh, this three dimension, this three domain, right, must we go one after another, or they can just simply very situational, like under this this circumstances, I like use transformational. After that, I I use performance, and I use development in another situation, or must be step by step. Uh, thank you for asking that. It comes in all together uh, as a dance, because uh, for example. Uh, uh, a, the, a primary model that we use uh, uh, in uh, uh, meta coaching is the uh, is the well formed outcome uh, uh, framework. In the well formed outcome, we are just going through uh, uh, all of it uh, at, uh, at one shot. We are going through the uh, the meanings, the intentions, the purpose of doing something where they are going to apply it and then what is it that they are going to do what are the resources that they need so all of this comes together in that uh, same conver uh, conversation it's just that by knowing that the coaching covers all three domains so you, we are bringing it into that particular conversation so it is never uh, just at the performance level meaning to say so you are a CEO in your organization. So you want to improve uh, in this particular uh, skill set that you have. So what is it that you need to do? Uh, so how are you are going to do it? So so the 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 question doesn't doesn't stop there, yeah, because the client may know what it is that they are going to do. So that that is at the um, uh, that is at the uh, uh, the performance uh, level, then moving into the next level of so what do you believe about that? So what is it that uh, that that uh, stopping you, and why is that important to you? Now we are going meta. The moment we go meta, so we are touching into their purpose, their intention, their value. So why is that important? Uh, why is that important to you, and how? Uh, so 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 uh, how how is it that? Uh, it enriches your life. So now we are going into the level of values, and what does that make you when you uh, when you're able to achieve that? So that goes into their identity as well. So moving into their identities, their values, and then going on to their purpose, vision. Uh, that allows the person to look at a particular a specific area. And now through that conversation, to be able to notice that in the coaching process, they will be experiencing that transformational development and also performance. Because if it is just performance alone, uh, we know uh, that uh, as a coach, we know that there are so many things that are holding them back and what's holding them back are at the level of developmental and also transformational. So that's why in that conversation, it is within one conversation, we are just going through all of the different domains. Does that make sense, uh, Chexu? Yeah? So any questions uh, that you may have? So this. Uh, that wraps up all of the uh, points that uh, I, uh, I was planning to uh, bring to you. The first point was on the mix of the uh, coaching 
uh, psychologists, the different types of psychologists, the five psychologists that we bring into the meta coaching system, the self-actualization psychology, the developmental psychology, cognitive behavioral psychology, social and group psychology uh, system, and existential uh, psychology. Understanding the mix of psychologies that we are bringing into coaching allows us to um, put the client in their rightful place so that we create the uh, relationship uh, that will bring them to uh, higher levels. Then we look uh, at uh, coaching as an interdisciplinary field. So we are bringing in multiple disciplines into coaching. So uh, it is not, uh, uh, I would say, uh, unidimensional. So it is multidimensional. Uh, that's how we look at uh, coaching with a client. And uh, we talk about the uh, psychology uh, for coaching is different from therapy and different from uh, counseling. Uh, yes, with the psychologies that uh, understanding of the psychologies uh, underpinning uh, coaching, you will be able to counsel uh, a person if your client at, at, at point requires uh, counseling. Uh, it's just that the psychologies that are uh, useful for therapy and the psychologies that we use for uh, coaching are uh, different psychologies. So we cannot use the same uh, psychology, uh, psychological understanding uh, uh, with people who are sane and well in coaching and people who are not. So that's why we need to separate that. So that's why in coaching, uh, we uh, are using a different set of uh, psychologies. And that's why when we look at coaching, there are three domains involved, the domain of uh, performance, the domain of developmental, and also the domain of uh, transformation. So those are the three domains that come in. Okay, so that so basically those are the uh, the things that we are looking at. So so that we can be more aware uh, about uh, about the psychologists as we are uh, coaching people to the next level. Not being aware of the psychologists. Uh, will render us to be unjust. I'll use the word unjust uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the client because uh, we, uh, let's say, if we are operating from the psychology of uh, therapy, then as a coach, we are going in trying to fix the, uh, trying to fix the client, trying, trying to uh, uh, get them to do things in the right way, and they are not growing. Yeah, it's, uh, probably if I were to use a, a, what I call a simple analogy, it's just like an uh, overprotective parent. Uh, being an overprotective parent, you are depriving your child of growth. So when a coach is using uh, the psychology of, uh, as uh, we use the term, the dark side of human nature, the broken uh, human, when you use that psychology, for, co uh, for coaching, it is just like an overprotective parent trying to decide for the child what needs to do. We need to shift into the psychology of the bright side of human nature. In that way, we are giving the client every confidence uh, and every uh, resource that they can draw out from themselves uh, to be successful. So as a coach, what we are uh, doing is that we are just guiding the, um, uh, we are not even guiding the client to do what they need to do. We are guiding the client to find and bring out the resources, the potentials that is inside of them. And they will know what to do without us telling them. Okay. So that's uh, basically at, uh, at the core of what we are talking about this evening on the psychology of coaching. So now I come to, uh, the my favorite part of the, uh, of the meeting is I would like to hear uh, your takeaway. So what is your takeaway uh, from this uh, session uh, 
uh, this evening. So uh, I'd like to go through uh, each and every one of you. Uh, I'll, I, as usual, I'll start at the bottom of my screen. So uh, Hawa, Maji, uh, are you there? May, may I hear from you? What is your takeaway uh, from this uh, session this evening? Are you able to access your microphone and uh, let us hear? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, good afternoon. Um, so so my, take, my take from this whole lecture today is um, knowing the difference between therapy and coaching, mm. where in coaching, it's a whole new thing, trying to harness, trying to bring out the person's best skill to improve a person, while in therapy is trying to heal a person from within before mm. now trying to um, self-actualize. And then I learned the different kinds of psychology, self-actualization, developmental psychology, and so on and so forth. And then I learned um, much about focus, coaching focus, and then the systematic, uh, that is the systematic approach for helping clients. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, th th there's a wonderful uh, summary of what we have covered. I'm so I feel so relieved that you are taking away all of those things uh, from from this session. Thank you, uh, Hawa. Uh, next, uh, Samson. Uh, what's your takeaway? Uh, thank you very much for the uh, facilitation today and for the training. I usual. Uh, I've learned a great deal today about uh, coaching. Coaching has to do with development. Coaching has to do with somebody that is in with mental health and coaching brings out the best on the person so that you can work to actualize your dream. Uh, just like uh, what you shared with us in the past about the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. So in coaching, you are learning from the mentor so that you'll be able to achieve your goal in life. Oh. Thank you, Samson. I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, I, I'm glad that uh, uh, towards I the end, the audio know. became better and better so I could hear your voice as well. So thank you, Samson. Next, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Salam, Salam Hamdun. Uh, so what's your takeaway from the uh, session today? Are you able to access your mic? No? Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'll move on to Mia. Mia, go ahead. What's your uh, takeaway for today? Okay, thank you very much. So since this is my first time to attend your session, I was quite surprised that there's going to be an oral recitation after. <laughs> Good thing that I have taken get notes. Can you hear me well, Mazuki? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. that's good. So, well, my takeaway was um, I was able to have a clear definition of the three which are the coaching versus the therapy and the versus counseling. Hmm. So sometimes I have this difficulty of mixing up this three. No, so with this um, session of yours, I was able to take down notes here that um, counseling is actually a light version of therapy and therapy is about dealing with the hurt and the dysfunction. Hmm. So hmm. what is coaching then? So coaching is, does not fix. It, it, um, it instead deals people who are functioning and, and who are really well, who is uh, willing to become more, to do more. And it is about becoming the best, which is um, bringing them to the next level of growth. So, and I like those three clear definition. And can I also take this opportunity to ask question from you, Marziki? Yeah, yeah go <laughs> ahead. 
for sure you have a couple of experiences dealing with um um shall we say what you 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 name it as insane or unwell um clients who does not need coaching at all but needs a therapy i am quite curious on how you're going to how did you to handle it or, or if you can let us borrow your famous line of mm. um shifting from coaching to letting them know that coaching is not the conversation that he is needing right now so how do you usually um bring him to the to the awareness of the kind of um intervention that he needs without offending him yeah. so do you have a very famous line that really worked effectively when you <laughs> encounter <laughs> this kind of clients yeah i'm quite curious about that if right. you can uh, thank thank you very much um so uh the thing is um i uh, what i can say is that for most of us in some areas to a large extent we may be unseen so that's <laughs> Yeah, there are times we are we have a no encounter temporary yeah, so that's insanity. Like with your friend, sometimes your friend, what? Are you crazy or something? Have you ever <laughs> had your friend say to you? <laughs> because, I agree with you. Because our logic is different. So to to a large extent, we are unseen to our friends. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Our friends, when they see us, uh, they say that we are unseen and vice versa. So to some mm -hmm. extent that unsaneness is part of uh, human beings because we have different logic circuits yeah okay. and okay. as i mentioned to you that using uh, met, uh, meta modeling we are able to come out and be able to uh, take a meta position and to notice in some areas our unsaneness and we can make uh, changes in that area okay. now when people who move towards to what we consider as being insane they don't respond to uh, they don't respond to uh, to step back to be able to look at themselves they lose the ability to look at themselves at the behavior and they lose the ability to uh, to look at their ways of thinking yeah so mm -hmm. so so now they are moving into being unhealthy so for me, the demarcation line, I have a very simple line that I use to determine whether the person has already crossed that line that that person requires therapy or that person uh, can uh, help him or herself uh, through uh, counseling or coaching is the line of hurt or harm. If I detect that that person may be thinking about hurting or harming themselves or others it may come, mm -hmm. come up in their words or may if it goes into the behavior that's already uh, more serious but if it comes out in their words uh, saying that uh, uh, sometimes they, they think about wanting to slit their wrist or kill themselves the moment such uh, mm -hmm. uh, language comes out that to me is an alarm bell mm -hmm. saying that this person now requires mm -hmm. therapy. Yeah, so that is my, my demarcation line. So a person may be so yeah. insane to me. I mean, their logic will be totally out of this world to me. However, mm -hmm. if that person still uh, has not shown any behavior that they may hurt or harm themselves or others, then mm -hmm. Uh, we are still working in the area of people who are uh, who are well. It's just that their frames uh, yes. uh, are already so uh, so messed up that they mm -hmm. are not able to see the world the way that others see the world. But these people are still, I would say, within the domain of uh, counseling uh, or even uh, coaching. So my line is that language that the moment they say that they may hurt or harm themselves uh, that uh, is my uh, uh, the line that i use uh, whether to <laughs> to hit the uh, alarm the, button or not yes um so how do you um how do you s cut the conversation because you needed him to be shifted to another type of intervention which is therapy mm. 
they yeah. usually cut it right away or you just have to go through of um just finish the conversation and maybe at the end of the conversation there's this um the advice would come in from your end yeah. how do you do that uh, I, I would be uh, as uh, straightforward to tell the person yes. that uh, you have just presented to me uh, issues that you are facing and mm -hmm. these are serious issues that you are facing and what I realize is that uh, those are issues that are beyond my level of expertise, expertise. to help you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so with my level of expertise, I am not the right person to help you. I would, uh, if you don't mind, may I recommend that uh, you meet this person or this person? Uh, I I know that they have a uh, the level of expertise that you need in order to solve that problem. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I, I I don't have that expertise. So just bringing it to say that uh, no, I I can't handle it because I don't know enough about this. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, very well. Um, very um, enriching and, and very clear. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Yeah. So moving on to Adila. Uh, if you are able to speak, meaning to, meaning to say you are, have stopped driving or if you are still driving, I don't know. Is there anything that you like to say as a takeaway? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Mazuki. I'm so glad I attended this course. Um, this is my first time actually. Um, uh, yeah, in, uh, knowing in depth about coaching, uh, the psychology of coaching. Um, it's a very um eye opening. I mean, of uh, this all this one, I, I know about coaching, uh, mentoring. Uh, but this is basically uh, uh it's also to a part of uh, the therapist that I think in current. Trends uh, as a human capital, we, we require these skill sets also because we are facing with all these um, challenges. Um, so it's, it's quite part of a tools that we can um, learn how to communicate with our people. Mm. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot more for me to basically um, sharpen or understand the skills and techniques uh, to be a better. I mean, better in in having or dealing with this kind of uh, situations. But I thank you so much um, for uh, giving this uh, experience and insights on how to uh, and maybe um, we'll be meeting or yeah, we would like to have more knowledge on this in the future. Right. Thank you uh, for joining us uh, this evening and uh, I'm, I'm happy that you, you are here for the first time and I look forward to you joining us uh, in the next session. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, Danielle, go ahead. Uh, I hope you've completed your 10,000 steps. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I've been sitting. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you uh, for tonight, Sherry. Uh, I think for me is... Uh, it reminded me that uh, coaching is for the people that who really want to change. Um, uh, looking at the psychology, uh, whether they want to, uh, they want to go for self actualization, uh, or there are certain area that uh, they need to develop. Uh, but the key is they they want it. It's not like they are forced to or. Yeah, so I think it's uh is for 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 the for the person that is healthy, uh, but uh sometimes uh, we get stuck because of uh, maybe the, the 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 thinking pattern is not right. Uh yeah, so yeah, so I think it reminded me that because sometimes um I I would tend to have like coaching conversation with people around me mm -hmm. like I keep like informal but sometimes i realized that not everyone actually wanted to go into that kind of conversation mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, maybe i asked the wrong questions or what and they might feel like how can you ask me this kind of questions what are you trying to know <laughs> yeah why you want to dip so deep yeah yeah so i i guess um 
yeah, sometimes I go too excited and then not realizing that maybe people don't want it. Yeah. So it's a great reminder of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for sharing uh, that uh, experience as well. Right. Uh, moving on to Guaching. Go ahead, Guaching. Uh, thank you, Mazuki. But before this, I have a wrong perception on the coaching. I thought the coaching is to fix the problem, fix the broken. But today's session, it, it gave me, uh, it built a new uh, perception about the coaching as it is to attain the higher best of self and also to become a peak performer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Guacheng. Uh, that's a very succinct um, uh, summary that you have just given. So thank you for that. Uh, next, uh, Lily, go ahead, Lily. First of all, uh, thank you, Mazuki, for, for your uh, sharing on this topic. To me, right, I, I mean, it, it, I, I have never think about coaching links with psychology. Oh. You know, no doubt that when, when I do the coaching session, yeah, I do observe, but it is not like, uh, like, what you have just shared like is very details in the sense that like okay when when the the person that are having this what is actually means and then what which kind of psychology is actually or the dimension of the psychology is uh, ties in mm. so for me it's, it's really a good learning that's why when uh, uh, Elvis to told me about that I was so eager to learn about this because I have never, never think of, it's like, you know, it's like a partnership, coaching and all this psychology are actually blend together. Yeah. For me, I, okay, I'm, I'm co coaching the person and then I know that is to help him to go, you know, to bring out his potential to the higher level, but not so much on this linkage. So thank you so much that I really learned something new. Thank you very much for saying that. Really appreciate. Uh, uh, I'm so glad that you are taking that away with you. Uh, and I hope that you will do uh, well uh, for you. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, Chuck Xiu, go ahead. Okay. So to me, I mean, make it short. Uh, my my, my takeaway today is, of course, three things. The difference among the, I mean, the uh, Coaching, because a lot of people might tend to, I mean, uh, so-called confused between coaching and training kind of thing. Hmm. A lot of people, they mix it up kind of thing and make some of them even blend it kind of thing. But to hmm. me, is counseling is for those who are having some negative experience before. And counseling can help them to overcome that kind of situation where coaching is to so-called develop and transform a person to, fit to I mean, towards the future. Which is nothing happened yet. Counseling is something happened already. Then they come and fix the problem. But mm. the coaching is to is to to so called I mean develop the person to face I mean uh, to take up any challenge and go go to mm. the future kind of thing. Which is not, something not happened yet kind of thing. Mm. And then for the therapist is something already have a negative past experience and at the moment is dysfunction kind of thing. Yes. Uh, that is that is my yeah my takeaway wow. today la. And of course, uh, and also the main thing is we can so sometimes interchange our role between coach and trainer, but never, never put our role in the therapist. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one has to be much <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much uh, for that, Chexi. I appreciate uh, those. Uh, and and uh, what I would like to say, everyone, uh, thank you very much for sharing your takeaway. And I uh, I'm, uh, I, I feel very encouraged when I listen to what you're taking away from this program. Uh, and I, I believe that what you are taking away from this session will be useful uh, to you. So uh, we've come to the end of the session. I really appreciate your being here. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And I hope that with the takeaway that you've got from this session, you'll be able to enrich your lives. And that is basically what I would like to see happen. So with that, Thank you, everyone. I hope to see you again in the next sessions uh, that we have. Uh, I have sessions every Thursday. Which of the topics that you are uh, keen on, you may uh, come to any of those topics. So with that, thank you, everyone. Good night and God bless. Uh, may you be safe uh, in your work and may you thrive in your 
live. So thank you and good night. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.